Hi, I'm Damari Gure. You're watching Reggae Boys Commentary. This video is brought to you by Andy Gone Nuts. 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. This video is brought to you by Starboy's Juices. Infusing fruits with sea moss in Philadelphia and New Jersey. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking your time out to watch this video in particular. But let me give you an update on a channel called Sport City. Yes, Sport City. It is a channel dedicated to everything related to Jamaican sports. I'm Javon Watson, and you're watching Erica Boys commentary. I'm Altaman Freddie Watler. And I'm Ricardo Baby Gardner, and you're watching the Reggae Boys commentary. Reggae Boys commentary, live and direct every time. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How is everybody doing? I hope you all are doing well. I'm Simon Preston. Welcome back to Reggae Boys Commentary. What's new? Well, certainly a few areas to discuss. But it's Tuesday morning and another day where we can be able to give thanks and another day where we can be able to reflect. And that is a day that we're going to do today as well. A mixture of both, you can say because those are two key elements that we're going to go right into for today. But first, I know I just wanted to, to, to show you guys as well so that we can be able to, you know, get into this aspect of video. Let me take some of the comments first. You'll share what says, bless up, Simon. Congratulations to the boys. Yeah, the boys did absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. True patriots. 150 percent bless up simon and congratulations to the team for third win jason gooden tv says bless up simon and all in the chat chris king says blessings sir preston blessings how are you doing i hope you're doing well just going to show you guys something bada bling says bless simon bless how are you hope you're doing well We press on and we'll move on forward. Just a thing, seven years ago was the last time that we were on a podium. 2017 CONCACAF Gold Cup. And now seven years later, we are bronze medalists in the CONCACAF Champions League. You know what I'm saying? So let me make this clear now. I want, why is it that I want to stress the journey of all of this? Because I'm getting to the title of the video as well. Because remember when the journey started in 2018 to where we are now? That's six years. Six years of the Nations League. We're in League B. We got to League A. We got to League A. 
we stayed in league a we played league a again we got out of the group stages what happened after that as well we're in the quarterfinals what happened in the quarterfinals we won and we defeated a team that we only defeated three times prior in our history this is the fourth time that we've ever defeated panama in international football 1969 2009 2019 and now add 2024 to that as well what a strike from dexter limbikisa what a strike truly is something special isn't it and that is exactly what i'm getting to vibing i'm getting to that detonation says blessing simon Clive gordon says congratulations boys we're moving in the right direction. We're continuing to improve. We're continuing to grow. We're continuing to, to progress. And all of these things So that's what I'll say. Okay. How was that? Man of Honor says blessing. Simon Ernest Moore says big up Simon. Lee says congrats. Float management says bless up. Hmm. Shamar Hall says love it, Simon. Well, guess what, Shamar? There are great things to come and great things will continue to come. So I'm not worried. Sanjay Brooks says, being I the stadium watching from. You were in you were at the ATT Stadium? Really? You were there? Why you never wave? <laughs> yeah, you should have waved, man. All right, so before I get to the title of this video, guys, just letting you know that 2 o'clock today, you'll have the British Virgin Islands hosting the US Virgin Islands in CONCACAF World Cup qualifying. I believe the BVI's Facebook page is going to show the game. If I can find the link, I'll send it. But basically this, the winner of that game today, or if the game ends in, if the game ends nil-nil, British Virgin Islands will be in Jamaica's group for the World Cup qualifiers, okay? So this game today determines who will be in Jamaica's group. You understand what I'm saying? I hope you guys... would really appreciate it. So we'll keep you guys up to date on that. What I'm going to show you guys now is in relation to the... Yes, Lee, of course. If I'm able to get the link for the game, the U.S. Virgin Islands against British Virgin Islands, I will pass it on. For sure, I will do that once I'm able to, to do that. And then for sure, I will. All right. So with that being said, now let's go to what this win means. Well, remember we took on a team that had some great results in World Cup qualifying. We took on a team that defeated Costa Rica handsomely in the quarterfinals of the Nations League. We took on a team that are no pushovers in CONCACAF. And we took on a very, very strong team. We took on a team that, as it stands, are ranked in the top three in the CONCACAF Nations League index. As it stands. So when you look at the CONCACAF rankings index at this point in time, you will see an update for the March index, and usually the March index will be updated at the end of the month, maybe the 30th or the 31st, but it's usually at the end of the month that the index is updated. All right? You'll share with us a couple more additions to the jigsaw. Yeah, it was great to see Casey Palmer in the mix. It was so nice to see him. Corey Burke as well. You know, his first involvement since the Gold Cup, Casey's first involvement since the Nations League as well. So, yeah, being in the stadium, Sanjay Brooks has been in the stadium and watching a game from the stand. The team, the improvement has been there for all to say. The best is obviously yet to come. I think you've hit the nail on the head there, Sanjay Brooks, in terms of the best being yet to come and the improvements that we have seen. I think persons are now looking at Jamaica as a genuine team that is contenders for conquer of honors and contenders to go have deep runs within competitions which is very good and i'm sure you would have heard coach Halgrimson. i'm not sure if you guys had listened to the post match press conference but i would play it if you guys want me to but it's because he touched on some very very important points that will stick with us 
for for times to come. Mr. United, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. And Rob Smith, I am getting to that. All right. So on the screen right now, you should see the content of ranking index as it stands. The points from the Nations League finals have not been added as yet, but as it stands, Mexico first, the United States second, Panama third, Canada fourth, Costa Rica fifth, Jamaica sixth. Now, remember now that in this index, Honduras defeated Costa Rica, right? So the team that was seventh defeated the team, sorry, it was Costa Rica that defeated Honduras. So so Costa Rica will be in the Copa America, not Honduras. So Costa Rica will very much be where they are right now. Jamaica, remember over 90 minutes, the score was 1-1 against the United States, right? And against Panama, over 90 minutes, the score was 1-0. So Jamaica defeated a team that is third within CONCACAF index, that is Jamaica are sixth within the CONCACAF index right now. Look at the gap in points between Jamaica and Costa Rica, all right? We're talking about 38 points, 38 points here, a gap that Jamaica can be able to, to leapfrog, right? Canada took on Trinidad and Tobago, so it was 1 a.m. against the 10th ranked team in the CONCACAF ranking index. They're expected to remain as is. Panama, they had back-to-back -back losses against Mexico and Jamaica in 90 minutes, right? So, and they also didn't score a goal in either of their games. So, with that being said, there is a very, very strong chance that they'll be losing some points there. Why was this win so important? Because of the possibilities that lie ahead. Now, if Jamaica are in the top four and remain there, because we're not sure as yet from CONCACAF, which month of the index they will use for the seedings of the next edition of the Nations League. But the important factor is you put yourself within the top four of the CONCACAF ranking index. And if Jamaica is in the top four of the CONCACAF rankings index, by the time that we have the draw for the next edition of the Nations League, that means that Jamaica will not participate in the group stages of the Nations League. So remember this time around, we had games against Haiti, Honduras, Haiti, Grenada in the group stages. So if Jamaica is in a top four, then Jamaica would be in a scenario like last year where we had the United States, Mexico, Canada, and Costa Rica playing in the quarterfinals as their first time playing within the tournament, which would mean the September and October windows for Jamaica can be utilized for friendlies. And I know it will be challenging, and I'll explain why, because other confederations are participating in World Cup qualifying. So in those September and October windows, if Jamaica are in the top four, what it would mean is that Jamaica can use these camps for a number of things. One, to get players together just for a camp. Or two, being able to have friendlies where you play against teams that aren't actually out of World Cup qualifying or don't have any games within those windows. So that is important there. And of course, you know, when you factor in other factors as well, the likes of Mexico, the United States, and Canada, they are going to be looking for friendlies as well. So just, just so that you all are aware. But it's highly unlikely that uh, a Mexico, USA, Canada, well, yeah, or even a Jamaica, would, would they would want to play Jamaica, I would say, because the likelihood of them playing each other later within the competition of the, the Concord of Nations League, a semi-final, a final, etc. But the September and October window, as Coach Halgrimson has always made mention, you know, having time together is so important. Being in camp for like a month, like the Gold Cup and like the Austria camp, he said, was so important. And, and that is one of the reasons why he's looking so looking forward to the Copa America, where you have the opportunity to spend a month with the team. And we've seen where once Coach Halgrimson has more time with the team, we've seen how the results, you know, how it comes. You know, 10 days in Austria and then seven days in the United States and we're defeating Trinidad and Tobago by four goals to one. So that's 17 days together. And then defeating St. Kitts and Nevis, so that'll be 22 days together. And then taking on Guatemala, 20, that's 29 days together. 29 days together and Jamaica are in the, the, the Gold Cup semifinals. You know, so it just goes to show over time, being able to work on the principles that Coach Harlow Grimson wants to work on, the more time together, what it does. And we've seen that being able to have those times helps. 
you know, because in a regular international window where it's not a Gold Cup, uh, Copa America, like for example, a Nations League period, you're spending a week together, eight days, 10 days together. So that is a time frame that you're spending when you are in those windows like September, like October, like the November window, like we had last year as well. So it just goes to show the importance of all of those elements being put together. There's a number of comments being put in. So I'm going to address that. I know Rob Smith has highlighted that. Rob Smith has highlighted that greatly. So, you know, hopefully that, that answers the question that you made mention. Marco says, are we getting that third spot? It really depends. In the CONCACAF ranking index, it really depends on those point situation, how much points Panama loses and how much points Jamaica will gain as well. So that is something that we're going to have to bear in mind as well, based on those factors of things. <clears throat> God bless you, Tess. Big up, Simon. Big up. I understand what you're saying, Shamar Hall. I understand that. Sanjay Brooks, well said, well said. True Color speaks about Anderson and Kova. You know, Kova, I'm so glad that he got his debut, but you no, know, he, he's going to need to get more first team minutes. That is what he needs right now. I think he has established himself playing under 21 football within England, but what he will need is senior team minutes. So if it means that Leicester City has to send him on loan to League One, then for me, I am absolutely fine with that. Just let him get some experience of first team football. That is what I believe Brandon needs. Croy Anderson, wow, what a journey for him as well. Made his first two caps for Jamaica against Grenada and Haiti back in October and had his third and fourth caps respectively against the United States and Panama. And now he has a medal around his neck, his first medal for Jamaica at 19. Guys, just, just, just think about this for a moment, all right? Guys, honestly. Think about this for a moment. Kuroi Anderson, 19, right? Dexter Lembekisa, 20, right? Joy Latibodir, 24. Dishon Bernard, 23. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Are you guys thinking and seeing what I'm seeing? Let me just make this extremely clear. Think about the, the players that have medals around their necks for Jamaica at such a young, tender age. Shaquan Davis, 23. Richard King, 22. Dexter Lembekisa, 20. Dishan Bernard, 23. Tavon Gray, 21. Joel Latibodir, 24. Kuroi Anderson, 24. Ronaldo Cifas, 24. Casey Palmer, 27. Shamar Nicholson, <clears throat> 27. Kahim Dixon, 19. Do you guys see the drift of where I'm going? Think about all of these players, right? <clears throat> all of these players have a medal around their necks. All of these players have a medal around their necks. You know what I'm saying? So I just want you to think about this. It's, 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 it's really something that we have to, to think about because when you have these players at 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, all getting experience of winning a medal now, think about what it's going to mean when these guys are the seniors come the 2030 World Cup qualifying cycle. Joy Latibodier is going to be 27, 28, maybe a future captain. Dishan Bernard is going to be 27, 28, probably a future captain, you never know. Kaim Dixon, 23, 24. You think about Tavon Gray, 24, 25, during that time as well. You think about other players that are part of the setup as well. Shaquan Davis will be 27 during that time. And they're going to be the ones that are the seniors and, and, and have already had the experience of been there, done that. Won a piece of a, a medal for Jamaica. Think about what this will do, reflecting upon experiences. I think all of this is so invaluable. And to see Dexter at 20, to see Karoy at 19, having players part of our setup at this age group, trust me, it brings a smile to my face. <clears throat> and that just makes it's it's that's why it's so passionate for me. <clears throat> yeah, Robson, that was a friendly before the goal cup, but I'm talking about in terms of this because of the cycle in relation to qualifying, etc. cetera. 
You're saying which ranking will let us avoid Panama? No, Sanjay. What we need to do, Sanjay, is in the second round of World Cup qualifying against Dominica, the Dominican Republic, against Guatemala, and either USVR, BAVI, what we need to do is get 12 points. We can get 12 points also with a healthy goal difference. Then the possibility exists. Jason, it is correct in terms of the, the Jamaica USA one because it was a ninth game over 90 minutes. But remember, let's not confuse CONCACAF ranking index with FIFA rankings, okay? Because FIFA rankings is different from CONCACAF rankings index, okay? And I will bring that on the screen so that you guys can be able to see it as well. Because the FIFA rankings is different from the CONCACAF rankings index. So this is the FIFA rankings that you're seeing on your screen. Croy Anderson is 20. Croy Anderson is 20. Cephas is 24. Dixus is 19. Yeah. Yeah, and the FIFA rankings is a different case compared to the CONCACAF rankings index. So we await the March FIFA rankings. Yes, the 2024-2025 cycle of the Conquest of Nations League begins in September. Jason, I'm looking for the equation. I'm looking for the equation. So once I can be able to, to get that. Or CONCACAF, I'll let you know, but I'll search for the equation for the CONCACAF rankings index. But just so everybody's aware, seedings for Nations League comes from the CONCACAF rankings index. World Cup qualifying seedings come from the FIFA world rankings. Okay. So that everybody is aware. What you're seeing on your screen now is the is the FIFA World Rankings. This is February, which means that March has not been updated. Usually the FIFA rankings are done on a Thursday. I think Thursday is the day of the week that you normally see the FIFA rankings. Right now, Jamaica are sixth and climbing. So Panama, our 44th in the world. And in terms from the world standpoint, that is how things look like at this point. But I'll tell you guys, you have maybe eight or nine other teams that might be thinking the same way and saying this is our chance three big spots with no usa canada or mexico so what does that mean it means regardless of your opposition that every game is taken seriously to ensure that we can end the second round of world cup qualifying with the maximum 12 points that is non-negotiable it's non-negotiable to get 12 points that is the minimum requirement 12 points and then the third round we will see will be on our group once we're able to do that nitro you're right and i'll have to do another video on this as well we have to fill the national stadium in june yeah it's important and we can look at this as a mini send-off in a sense for the reggae boys a mini send-off to copa america 2024 or like welcoming back the reggae boys following the the nation's league bronze medal so that's something that we can bear in mind
in the FIFA rankings, Jason Gono, um, I think you have some accuracy there as Panama 1,475 points here in terms of the gap compared to Jamaica's 1,002, uh, 1,421. So, yeah, in terms of the gap for FIFA rankings, perhaps not this window, but ones to follow. Who will play in the Nations League? All teams play in the Nations League, Hyper Power 26. All teams play in the CONCACAF Nations League. It depends on the CONCACAF rankings index that will determine who plays at which stage. That is what it will be determined. Yeah, absolutely right, Nitro, for sure. And I know many of you have just joined in late, but I just want to highlight something that you guys might say, hmm, about, you know what I'm saying? So I just want to make this clear. When you're thinking about the Jamaican squad, right? Let's talk about the youth in the Jamaica squad presently, because many people, you know, may not realize it or maybe realize it, you know, Think about Ashaquan Davis, right? He's 23. Let's go to the defense, right? Ishan Bernard, he's 23. Joel Latibodere, he's 24, right? Tavon Gray, he's 21. And I think in terms of the defenders, the only other person I think would be there, well, you have Dexter Lambikisa, he's 20. Richard King, he's 22. Others, you look at Greg Lee, who's 29, Hector, 31, Damian Lowe, who's, who's 30. You go to other positions on the field now, and you talk about Karoy Anderson, who's 19. Karoy Anderson, who's 19. Yeah. Ronaldo Cephas is 24. Kaheem Dixon is 19. 19 years old. So, yeah. So, it's quite something. Truly is something special when you bear in mind the ages of these people getting medals around their necks. Some of them getting their first medal. And you have somebody like Andre Blake, who's just picked up his fourth medal for Jamaica. Won Caribbean Cup in 2014. He has two Gold Cup silver medals and no a bronze medal in the Nations League. You know what I'm saying? So all of that put together is key. See what you guys are saying in the comments. The national more dangerous. <clears throat> well, technically, you know, over 90 minutes, we, it was 1-1 against the United States. So when you put that into perspective, 
That means Jamaica are now 10 games unbeaten on the road in the Nations League. Because over 90 minutes, it was 1-1, right? And then the, the Panama game was a 1-0 victory, you know? Well, Sanjay, a number of things can be done to improve. You know, firstly, you have to know your market. I think it's important to know your fellow Jamaicans, their interests, their styles, and everything like that. You know, what are some of the things that can influence somebody's desire? Because demand is the willingness and the ability. Because I can want that Rolex watch, but do I have the ability? Do I have the X number of dollars? So it has to be the willingness and the ability. You can't just have the ability. <clears throat> okay, so I can have the money to go buy, you know, a pair of shoes. But do I have the willingness to buy a pair of shoes? So it has to be the willingness and the ability. So to create that demand now, Sanjay, to get persons out, especially for a sporting event, results, right? Check one. We've defeated a great team. We're going to be moving up in respective rankings and indexes, indices, and we're going to be continuing our progression as well. That's every reason. You know, top quality players from all across the globe will be there as well. So when you factor that in, I think that can bring crowds out. I know one thing that I know persons have spoken about in, in the past is cost of, of tickets. Perhaps that might influence people as well, their decisions, what to buy, etc. You know, that influences people in terms of what they can buy and everything like that. So when we're looking at, for example, <clears throat> ticket prices, right? We can think about that as well. So those that is something that can influence things as well. So results and also the situation in relation to prices. Grandstand, bleachers, so we'll see. What's another thing that can influence attendance? Music. Music is so important in the Jamaican landscape. And I'm going to talk about music in another video. Because I've spoken about this before. If I were to ask you guys right now, which Jamaican artist can sing a song about the Reggae Boys today? Today. And the stadium full by the World Cup qualifiers. Who would that artist be? Manavalora made this point earlier that he, I think he needs to go out on loan at the end of the season. That's going to be extremely important. Uh, yes, Omari, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it's truly a special thing, and I would say <clears throat> a great accomplishment. So thank you very much. Taran Williams says entertainment, yeah. Hmm. Specials for tickets, yeah. You can have ticket giveaways, maybe some trivial. Yeah, that can create interest, but I think it's more than just that. More than just. More than just that. And I made this point before I take Biro Golden's comments. It's gonna be it's it's an it's an absolute shame to have persons that live in Jamaica, live in Kingston live in Portmore, live in Clarendon, that live in Jamaica, generally. And you have 1,000 persons watching a stream online when they could be at the National Stadium. It's not going to be a 4 o'clock kickoff. So you can leave from work at 5 o'clock on that Thursday and find your way to the National Stadium with time to spare before kickoff. You can. You can. So why not? Bureau Gordon says, Massacre, we need a team of artists. I believe Massacre can have that impact. I know some persons have spoken about the teacher 
and the teacher we know has a massive influence, a massive influence in that aspect as well. Because to this day, the songs that he has sung that have related to football are still being echoed amongst fans today. You know, you know the, the song where you speak about I'm the baller and the manager, Alex Ferguson and Bibidis. And when he said he wants to go a World Cup to see Bibi score a few goals. Eddie Guna. <laughs> uh, Brand King. <laughs> oh, people in the chat. Jamar says the teacher. Okay. Sanjay Brooks says, I think you have a party before a big home game. Hmm. A party at the National Stadium? No. No. No, not at all. If a skill of them, Mr. Shoemaker, like when Walter Boyd, Azteca, we you know about pressure. We you, we you know about pressure. Exactly. So you think about those songs where football has had an influence. So if you do a song now and say, oh, but upon the stats like them, all right, great. You know, 11 goals, uh, sorry, 11 games, five goals, four assists for Jamaica. In his journey, he's only lost one competitive game for Jamaica. Well, he's only, he's only played competitive games for Jamaica, not friendlies. He's only lost one game for Jamaica. Everything else has been wins and a few draws USA in the Gold Cup and then also you think about Haiti as well but there have been wins other than that yeah you're right Eddie you're 100% right about that one Bureau Gordon you can't have a halftime show it is against FIFA regulations to have a, a halftime show where you have an artist come on the cycle track and perform it you cannot do that it's against FIFA regulation to have a halftime show. So again, we have to think about our people. What will bring numbers out, right? Results, we already have results going our way, right? Good players, we have great players. Now, the cost of the ticket. That is something that will be worked upon. Okay, let's think about other factors now. Some people might say the opposition, but guess what? It's a World Cup qualifier. It's a World Cup qualifier. So that is very important. Very, very important. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. An after party, I can't do that at the National Stadium. Can the performance be before the game? No, before the game you have the warm up, so no, that cannot happen. So a performance at the National Stadium on match day? No, that cannot happen, Mark. You'll have a, a, a DJ where you have where you have a sound box and stuff, but an actual performer go on the cycle check and perform? No, that cannot happen. Interesting, Jermaine. It's it's the dynamic though, as you can imagine, is very difficult when you factor in training times and everything. Different parts of the country that will be a challenge to take a player, finish training, 11, 12 o'clock, take him all the way to West Milan, arrive four o'clock, 
talk for two hours and take him all the way back and it's 10 o'clock. I think that would be really taxing on a player to do that. I do think he can work, but I don't think he can work to parishes that are further away from the nation's capital. Simon, Rise Up is a classic song. Hmm. And after party at the National Stadium, yes, yes, boat management. Hmm. Television. Hmm. Jason, um, how long ago did you migrate from Jamaica? Because I've had my experiences in mainstream media, right? And mainstream media, so that everybody wears, it's television, radio, and print and print being newspaper. And marketers generally are shifting away from mainstream media in promoting their product or service and going in more online media in terms of promoting their product or service. I'm not saying mainstream media is dead, but what I'm saying is that the focus has shifted. So let me give you guys an example. I guarantee you right now that nobody watching this video live still ensures that they reach home to watch seven o'clock news your father your mother your grandmother your grandmother yes but you personally are not going to rush home to sit down and watch news at seven o'clock why you have your phone and you know exactly what is happening in the country you know exactly what is going on around you do you wait until seven forty-five to watch sports news or wait until eight o'clock to on, on, on different channels for, for sports news or listen to the, the radio at 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. You know exactly what is happening, right? So you know when your phone, you know exactly what is happening. You don't have to wait until the evening to find out what is happening. As I said, mainstream media is not dying. But what I'm saying and the point that I'm making is that despite the quality work that has been done by mainstream media in terms of the the interviews that are conducted and everything, you know exactly what is happening hours before the news, if you get my drift. Give it to Bomb Bomb and Ramish. Ian Campbell says, bless up, Simon. Bless up. Stadium East. Mm. Stadium East, it would be a training site for at least the opposition team, so that would be a no. All right, new medium. Jermaine Blake, think about it. You say you want the players to, to do a commercial together. They're at their respective clubs right now. And the next time that the group will meet together is, is, is late May, early June. Even the players domestically are in their clubs and they have JPL playoffs to come as well. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, the reason why I ask Jermaine is because of um sorry Jason. The reason why I ask Jason is because of you know if you are on if if you left the island recently you would have known okay, this is still the trend amongst mainstream media, etc. Does anybody here still buy a newspaper? No. If some people here work nine to five, they probably get it at their desk or see grandma, grandpa read newspaper. What other countries are doing what? If the tickets were free, how full the stadium would be? If we just gave away tickets for the DR game? Well, honestly, that's not going to happen. So, yeah. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> so that's been a massive factor of things. So, as I've said, while our parents and our grandparents still listen to the radio and watch TV to get their news, our generation, we know we pick up our phone or we're on our laptop and we know exactly what is happening, exactly what is happening around us. Owen Owen says, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing? No, Jason, not on game day. It is a training site for the opposition teams, match day minus one, match day minus two, it depends. But still, to have... 
to have that facility on match day, you need Independence Park Limited to gain approval. And because of the proximity to the National Stadium, I doubt the green light would be given there. Mendel, we're not sure about this as yet. We're just going to have to wait to see how the CONCACAF rankings index goes. But we're not sure about that at, at this point in time. Lance Blakes is checking in. Big up, Reggae Boys and Sports City family. Big up. Is there a confirmed TV network for Copa America? So good question, Mikey, because, you know, this is something that has been the conversation of many, not only in Jamaica, but outside as well. You know, this has been something huge, really, really huge, you know. <clears throat> so in terms of broadcast rights in the States, it's Fox Sports for English. And for Spanish in the United States, it would uh, Univision Deportes or TUDN, as it is called today, right? In terms of in Jamaica, I'm not sure. But in the US, it's Fox Sports and TUDN. In Canada, it is TSN, all right? Brazil, it's Grupo Globo. Costa Rica is Teletica. Uh, Honduras is Canal Once. So that you are aware. Can third place qualify in Copa America? What do you mean, can they qualify in Copa America? Jamaica is already in the Copa America. Jamaica is in a group with Mexico, Venezuela, and Ecuador. For World Cup qualifying, CONCACAF has three automatic spots. Three automatic spots for World Cup qualifying and two teams will head to the Intercontinental Playoffs. Ernest Mori? I'm not sure. The World Cup qualifiers Nitro? <clears throat> what, we'll, what we've seen in the past is Flow Sports show the previous setup World Cup qualifying. Have they renewed the contract? Well, we're just going to have to wait and see. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So yeah, make sure you guys hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Alrighty. That's what I said, Nitro. That's what is what I said. The next FIFA ranking, I'll have to check if it's this Thursday. But usually it is a Thursday where it, where it updates. The third place in group qualify for the next round in Copa. No, Mikey. The top two teams in each group in the Copa America <clears throat> will qualify for the quarterfinals. So... The top two in each group qualifies for the quarterfinals. The team that finishes third and fourth, they go home.
Oh, big up, Eddie. Yeah, I appreciate that. Big up, big up, big up. Peter Mystic, I explained this all the way back to 2018. I'm not sure if you're a subscriber to this platform, but I would encourage you to. The reason why Klonka have separated themselves from the FIFA rankings index is to ensure that they have seedings for CONCACAF specific tournaments. You even have a CONCACAF under 20 rankings as well. And we'll get to that in future videos as well in relation to what pot and seeds Jamaica will be in for CONCACAF under 20 qualifying as well. Yeah, I'm not saying, I'm not saying go on and make the stadium uh, free. I'm not saying that at all. I do think giveaways can help in promoting, yeah, trivia questions and so on and so forth. I do think that can help, but that's not the only thing. Ian McKenzie says, big up, Simon. Big up. How are you doing, man? I hope so, Ian. I genuinely hope so. Well said, Mr. Porto. Well said, Mr. Porto. Jason Kuhn, remember you asked me this about half an hour ago, and I said to you that I would do some research on it for you. Yeah, man, you asked me this question already 30 minutes ago. Good afternoon to all Jamaican fans home and abroad. Congratulations to our boys for achieving such greatness. Third in Clunker of Nations League. Yeah, and the journey that has come with it as well, when you're bearing in mind, we were in League B, taking on Antigua and Barbuda, Aruba and Guyana, and then getting promoted to League A. Suriname and Mexico, and then another league A cycle with Grenada, Haiti, Honduras, and Haiti again. Quarterfinals against Canada, and here we are today, reminiscing on a moment where we are, and that is bronze medalists. Yeah, man, all is good, Jason. All is good. Dan McKenty says, bless up. Drew Ross, aka Drew Forsey family says, Drew Ross, aka up. Our Barbie's family up. Honestly, Eddie, somebody could offer me two million US dollars. No, I would never sell it. No. No, it's uh, it's about it's too valuable. I can't do that. It's One of my most valuable possessions. <laughs> yes, Marlon King, I definitely agree because if he observes what happens in the senior national team, then he can take bits and pieces for the under 20s, you know, the match day routine, training day routine, meetings, training, lunch, uh, afternoon session in terms of another afternoon meeting. Uh, set pieces meeting or it might be a team opposition meeting or situations in relation to media training or in relation to you know get to know the players better like um, activation or team bonding sessions I do think all of these elements are incredibly important so that coach Wade can be able to take bits and pieces for the under 20s for July yeah Yeah, good point, Nitro. The thing, though, is Nitro is this. Kingston is not a vacation hub. Montego Bay is a vacation club. If persons are flying to Jamaica, they fly to Montego Bay if they're going for vacation stuff. People that come to Kingston come for business trips, sports, not necessarily for leisure. It's extremely rare that somebody flies into Kingston for vacation. Magic chain says you look at my passport soon. Okay. That's cool. The future is bright, Andre, Andre. Or is it Andre squared? <laughs> the future is bright. I don't think anybody can question that at all based on 
what has been accomplished based on what we have gone on to achieve. You have players in the squad that are medalists, around, that have medals around their neck, players that have great experiences, have garnered good experiences, that have worked hard, have been disciplined, that have been true patriots, accepted a Jamaican call, and have been part of this journey from Austria last year, some of them, like a Joel Latibodier. I mean, yes, he played a Catalonia game, but I'm talking now in terms of like consistency of camps. We talk about the Austria camp. We can also talk as well about the Gold Cup as well, with the Mario Gray being involved in each window since then, you know. So all of this, when you put it into perspective, has been a great one. And now we have players and even teenagers and players in their 20s, early 20s, that have medals around their necks and say, I've won this for Jamaica. Andre Blake has four medals. He has a Caribbean Cup medal in 2014. He has two Gold Cup silver medals, and he has now this medal. Shamar Nicholson, three medals to his credit now. Gold Cup, Caribbean Cup, Nations League. Same thing as well for, for Damian Lowe as well. He's also accumulated the same number of medals. And I was doing some research recently. I think Jermaine Taylor with five medals has the most. So two more for Andre Blake, and he would be at the top of the list in terms of Jamaicans winning medals. Because even when you go back to the squad in the 90s, right, we got Gold Cup bronze in 93, and we won a Caribbean Cup in 98. So in terms of medals, you know what I'm saying, that is what where things would be from that sort of standpoint. You know? So it just goes to show how this squad is, the fruits of their labor, in being able to get this accolade. Which is good. So that's where we are at this standpoint. Magic change, which club do you represent? <laughs> Malik Mothersil is a great experience to be able to, to get some playing time in senior football. I know a club in Merseyside who are looking at him, but so good that uh, Peterborough being able to get minutes under his belt, and this is what he needs as a 20-year-old, needs minutes under his belt. That is exactly what he's getting. No, Jason, for those that are selected for the Nations League finals and those that for, for the squad players that are in the Nations League finals, that is who it is for. But let me double check. He's been an inspiration, hasn't he? Five goals, four assists in 11 appearances. He's been good. Declan Stanis, I think it's fair to say that everybody has been a leader. And if you look on the pitch and you see those individuals that have held their hands up, I mean, look at the passion Dexter Lampihi saw when he scored. Look at Joel Latibadir when he goes up to the referee to defend the challenge made by his fellow teammates. Look at Bobby Reed when he brings the ball to the near the corner flag. Look at Damien Lowe, the inspiration there as well. So we have a great team. And as I highlighted, when you think about Dishan Bernard, 23, Joel Latibodier, 24, Dexter Lembekisa, 20, Karoy Anderson, 19, Tavon Gray, 21, Kahim Dixon, 19. Shaquan Davis, 23. When you factor these guys right here and the experience they're, gar they're garnering at this point, think about what it will mean down the road as well. Think about what is it that's going to be. The leaders that they're going to be. Because Damien Lowe in 2016 when he made his debut, 
certainly would have been looking up to the likes of the decoy Williamses of this world, the Corey Burks that already have international caps now, Damien Lowe, six, seven years on, quite proudly one of the leaders of the group. You understand what I'm saying? And you think about when Andre Blake made his debut in 2014, who are the senior players around him? The Adrian Mariapas of this world, the Wes Morgans of this world, you know, the Rudy Austins, the Javon Watsons, and now a decade onwards, and Andre Blake is that man in the hot seat. So think about Kuroi Anderson, a decade down the road. Dexter Lembekisa, a decade down the road. You understand what I'm saying? Think about a Kareem Dixon, a decade down the road. Think about a Dishon Bernard down the road, what it will mean for these individuals as well. When you have that general core, I think I named seven or eight names. I mean, you have to be have to be thinking about this in, in a very positive light. Well, Ian, it's it's a big year because you also have the under 17s in August as well. And we know what that what that means for us as well in CONCACAF tournament, the under 20 world, the under 17 World Cup, I should say, will expand to 48 teams from 24. And when you bear in mind that CONCACAF has four spots. It means that you're going to have an increase, potentially six, because every confederation is set, get to see an increase. So the bare minimum, you're looking at five spots for CONCACAF at the very bare minimum, at the under-17, that is. You know what I'm saying? So when you put all of this into perspective, it's a, it's a good one. So it's a great look, guys. <coughs> so, June, World Cup qualifying and Copa America heading into July. And then in July, under 20s, August, under 17s. September, October, November is Nations League. And next year, being 2025, we'll start with another cycle of women's. World Cup qualifying. That's right, another cycle of women's World Cup qualifying. Isn't that going to be something? Yeah. The 106th year anniversary of CONMEBOL coincides with the, this Copa America in 2024. So that's exactly where we are at this point. And you guys know what you need to do already in terms of hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button. Let's get to 20K. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's a good look for sure. Wayne Carnegie says, big up, Simon. Big up, Wayne. How are you? Hope you're doing well. How are things? Yeah, and I should <clears throat> share as well in relation to the CONCACAF under 20 that the CONCACAF under 20 championship, the what has been decided is in relation to the date for the draw. All right, so I will share that. So just a reminder, the 
the draw for the CONCACAF Under-20 Championship is slated for April 11. <laughs> So that is what is going on right now. Marlon King says, Bobby Reed is very underrated, but Jamaica loves you. I love all of them. Every single player that represents Jamaica. Bobby Reed. Damari Gray. Joel Atibadir. Disham Bernard. Casey Palmer. Everybody. Shamar Nicholson. Shaquan Davis. Jamali White. Andre Blake. Give me one second, folks. Well, Andre, Andre, I, I don't think it's any secret to anybody that I have my level one in in talent identification from the Scottish Football Association. I'm delighted to, to receive it, and it was quite a learning experience in this atmosphere. It was truly helpful. So I think April 11. Yeah, I think April 11, I have a clap, I have a my next one so yeah looking forward to it that should be a good one but yeah i'm grateful for the experience we have quality players don't we sanjay think about casey palmer and nana some great players karoy anderson I think he has shown that he can manage, as some people might call it, big man football. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's he's going to be a great player. Talent identification, Jason Gunnar. Talent identification. He needs a club, Mr. Carnegie. That's what needs to happen. He needs a club. And once you can find a club, then you're able to So yeah, that's what I say, you know.
Michael Salah, you've seen the administration speak openly about it. So, what you've seen, so that everything has been settled. So, it's now down to the the head coach, whoever that will be, whether it's Coach Gilbert or whether it's someone else. It's the head coach that picks the team. So it's now up to the coach now to, to decide. Thank you very much, Mr. Andre. Andre, I appreciate it greatly. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Jason. All right. So great to have you guys here. And I'm still a pleasure for you all to be on this stream. If you guys haven't already, I encourage you to hit the like button. And after doing so, to hit the subscribe button as well. Okay, guys? I greatly appreciate it. And I'll press on from there. Okay? Good. Thank you, guys. Be safe. More videos to come. Because remember, 2 o'clock Jamaica time, it's USVI against the British Virgin Islands. So we'll look out for that. All right, guys? Be safe. I'm Altaman Freddy Butler. And I'm Ricardo Baby God, man. And you are watching the Reggae Boys commentary. The Reggae Boys commentary, live and direct every time. Hi, I'm Damari Gure. You're watching Reggae Boys commentary. This video is brought to you by Andy Gone Nuts, 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mmm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471. This video is brought to you by Starboy's Juices. Infusing fruits with sea moss in Philadelphia and New Jersey. Refreshing, nutritious, and delicious. There are numerous flavors to choose from. There is strawberry sea moss, peanut hard on, beet and thing, pineapple sea moss, mango sea moss, pineapple ginger, ginger root, cucumber ginger, and so much more. Call Starboys at 1-267-904-3454. That's 1-267-904-3454. Call now and you won't be disappointed. If you think the juices were good, then try Starboys Jello, full of flavor and sumptuous. Again, call Starboys at 1-267-904-3454. Three four five four.
That's one two six seven nine zero four three four five four. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking your time out to watch this video in particular. But let me give you an update on a channel called Sport City. Yes, Sport City. It is a channel dedicated to everything related to Jamaican sports. Football, cricket, athletics, netball, rugby league, rugby union, tennis, lacrosse, swimming, you name it, we got it on Sport City. And what is the channel designed to do? It is designed to highlight Jamaican talents across all of those sporting disciplines. If you're a Jamaican and you're playing that sport, then we got you covered on Sport City. So it's quite simple, guys. Hit the subscribe button to Sport City right now. Hi, my name is Lee Williamson. Subscribe to Reggae Boys Commentary. Hi, my name is Joby McEnough. Subscribe to Reggae Boys Commentary. I'm Javon Watson, and you're watching Reggae Boys Commentary. Hi everybody, I'm Darren Moore, and you're watching Reggae Boys Commentary. Yes, Reggae Boys Commentary, like and subscribe, yeah? Oh. Reggae Boys Commentary, like, share and subscribe. Yeah. Reggae Boys Commentary, <laughs> subscribe, like and share. Hi, I'm Chris Binney, and I'm Jamaica's number one squash player and nine-time Caribbean champion. And you're watching Reggae Boys Commentary. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and share button below. I'm Altamon Freddy Wattler. And I'm Ricardo Baby Gardner. And you are watching the Reggae Boys Commentary. Reggae Boys Commentary, live and direct every time. 